You know, in years where we don't get many rains, the lakes get down really, 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 really low. And obviously, if there's less water, the fish have less places to hide. So that might be an advantage. But what's another advantage to the lakes when they get really, really, really low? Good morning, guys and girls. May 27, May 27. We're going to be looking in the book of Psalm 104.9, 104.9. This is a pretty good one right here. You set borders for the seas that they cannot cross. You set borders for the seas that they cannot cross. How powerful is God? How almighty is God? Can you realize that he sets borders for the seas that the seas can't cross? You want to go right to here and stop. I won't let you go any further. That's how powerful God really is. Tidal waters have always presented a challenge for me in bass fishing. Just about the time I think I've got it figured out, the tide <laughs> beats me again. I'm telling you, that's one of the most difficult things I've had to learn in fishing is tidal waters. The one thing, though, that seems pretty constant is that low tides are better while high tides are more difficult. Obviously, in low tides, they've got less places to hide, but they also, it exposes a lot of cover and stuff, and it begins to get out where there's not much left, and so that little bit of cover they can get on. Low tides seem to be a lot better to fish. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Also, it's leaving sometimes quite a bit of land uncovered where food's moving around, things moving around, and, and some of that food is up there is moving that back down to the edges, and it gets, it gets out where they can catch it a lot easier. By the way, if you're not subscribed to the Catch of the Day channel, hit that subscribe button right now. Hit that little bell so you won't miss a single video. We post a scripture, a devotional built around fishing, and a fishing tip every single morning, five o'clock central time. It'll help your fishing, and it'll get you closer to God, which will make your life better. Guaranteed. Absolutely guaranteed. Isn't it amazing how the tides really work, though, when you think about it, how timely they are, and how very predictable you know, you could look at a tidal table five years in the future, 10 years in the future. And you know what? When the, you get there, they'll be exact. They'll be exactly right. What a mighty God who could control these huge bodies of water and move them up and down, in and out, on a daily basis. God never says, oops, and accidentally allows the tide to rise another 20 or 30 feet. You know, when we was up in Alaska, tide was changing 20 feet every time it changes, at least 20 feet. And it did that twice a day, twice a day, 20 feet. Just think about that. I mean, the tide would be, the edge of the water would be right here. And then the edge of the, the tide would come up and the edge of the water would be maybe a half a mile up there, a half a mile up there. It was amazing. Absolutely, incredibly amazing. But he never says oops and accidentally allows the tide to rise another 20 feet. If it's going to rise two foot, it rises two foot. If it's going to rise 20 foot, it rises 20. It doesn't rise 30 or 40 or 50. Exactly. He is precise. He is exactly precise with these gigantic bodies of water. We've got faith enough in God, even non-Christians, we have faith enough in God to build homes and businesses right on the waterfronts, knowing that God's not going to say, oops, or he's not going to say, well, I think I'll let it go another 10 foot today just because those guys over there don't believe. I'll just let it go another 10. He does it so precise. Recognizing his power is the beginning of understanding of just how powerful God really is. Just how powerful the God that I serve really is. The God that you need to be serving really is. He is all powerful. He's all knowing. He's all encompassing. He's all everything. You know, uh, this is a time of the year when they pick, uh, pick all Americans in, in girls softball, which I love college girls softball. It's, my buddy Red Berry down in Alabama said, it's the only sport going right now. Well, it's really not. The NBA finals are going on. Major League Baseball is going on. Uh, the NBA draft's going to start here pretty soon. Uh, there's tennis going on, golf going on. But to Red Berry, the only sport happening right now is college women's softball. And I'm telling you, it's dynamite. Oklahoma, we, we just love our girls' basketball. Uh, well, we love our girls' basketball team, too. But the softball team, we're so enthralled in it. And, and they play, uh, they start to, in the Super Regionals, uh, they start the Super Regionals, uh, well, I guess uh, I guess they start Friday, just a couple, of, a couple of days from now. I guess they start Friday. What a mighty God who can control these huge bodies of water. Recognizing this power is the beginning of understanding just how powerful God really is. So if you wonder about God, 
If you wonder if he's got the power to help you in your life, if you wonder if he's got the power to heal you when you're sick, if you wonder if you got the power to straighten out your marriage or straighten out your kids that might have gone astray, if he's wonder if you got the power to get you off an addiction of some sort that you have, if you wonder if he's got the power to give you babies when you've been trying to have a baby and you haven't had a baby, if you're wondering about that he's got the power, think about the tides and how he keeps them going perfectly day in and day out, year after year after year. God's got the power to do for you whatever you need done. All you got to do is ask him. All you got to do is trust him. All you got to do is believe and obey. And he can do amazing things in your life. He's done amazing things in ours. He's doing an amazing thing right now. And he will continue to do that forever, day after day after day. And when we leave this earth, he'll be doing it eternally for you and me. Here's our tip for today. Take pictures. That's right. Take pictures of water at low levels to know where to fish when the water comes back up. I'm telling you, when this lake right here, when we lost this lake back in 2015, we not only took pictures, but we built structure out there in places. We put rock piles. We put gravel over here against this bank where the fish could go in and spawn. And it was amazing to look at just this little 130-acre lake. So you can think about a 10,000 or 20,000 or 50,000-acre lake that gets 20 or 30-foot lake. Down in Florida, they draw the, them down sometimes. They draw those pools of water down, the giant pools of water. And when they draw them down, of course, it congregates whatever fish is left. But you can get out there and look around. They ride around out there in dune buggies. They ride around out there on those empty lakes in, uh, in uh, uh, airboats and things. They run around four-wheelers taking pictures and learning what the lake looks like when it's down. So when the water comes back up, you'll be able to catch fish. Guys and gals, go out there and have you a great one today. This is the lay day that this is a day that the Lord has made and he's made it spectacular. Look at this day. It is absolutely incredible. May has been the most wonderful month that we've had so far this year. The only way I know how to beat it is when we get into June, it'll be even better. Guys and girls, go out there and have you a great one today. And remember, remember, I sure do love you.